Liverpool lose the Constructors' Championship because of this decision, then it's on Christian Horner and not Sergio Perez. Because as far as I'm concerned, Checo's pulled an absolute blinder of a deal. And oh yes, the uh, bean counters at Red Bull will be happy too. In one fell swoop, the fates of four drivers have been sewn up for at least one season. Sergio Perez has extended his original contract for a second time through until 2026. Although I don't reckon it's a full on two year extension, I think it's a one plus one jobby because in the statements that Christian Horner has released, he's been talking about 2025. Not once has he mentioned going through into the new era of Formula One. He's been talking about next year. And really, here to stay, again? This is just getting lazy now. I thought it was old when Albon's team did it last week. I am extremely happy that Sergio was able to get this deal, as according to rumours from a few weeks ago from Mexican sources, Perez was pushing for a two-year deal and Red Bull were pushing back on that. But as far as I can tell, Checo got the better deal, something closer to what he originally wanted. They reached a compromise instead of just going, one year and that's your lot. One thing is absolutely certain though, there are going to be people who are not happy with this deal, but as far as I'm concerned, this is a major coup for Team Checo, and it's now guaranteed the Mexican Minister of Defense a really good spot on the grid for pretty much until up until his retirement effectively. And here's why. And to all my Mexican fans out there, que tal? Sorry. I don't think you need me to tell you that by signing Sergio now, it completely curtails any speculation of his future for the rest of the year. And if all goes well, he could have a place at a front-running team until he's approaching his 37th birthday. By Christian Horner agreeing to this, this has now put the ball firmly in Checo's court. He can now basically do whatever he wants. After this, he can retire, he could go to another team, and they will certainly take his expertise from the Red Bull camp and a very, very long stay at that. Or he could simply pump for another extension, perhaps. I bet you're going to see a much happier Sergio Perez this weekend. Having the prospect of your career ending is a very, very daunting prospect. And now he's able to kick the can down the road for a couple of more years, you know, one or two, and that can easily make all the difference and maybe prevent something of 2023 happening again in any capacity. And yes, he undoubtedly had a terrible season with constant mistakes most likely inflicted from both Max Verstappen and stamping out any trace of a challenge, which was legitimately there at the start of the year, as well as Helmut Marko constantly putting out statements and opinion pieces which got into the English tabloid, and let's not forget the social media spheres perpetuating that notion and really sending negative vibes his way and actually sending him towards a sports therapist. So that's not cool in of itself. As we have seen with Esteban Ocon and Logan Sargent and maybe to a lesser extent Zhou Guan Yu. If the English speaking sphere of the Formula One fandom turns against you, it can get incredibly vicious online. And Checo really had to dig deep to try and survive last year, and it all culminated at the Mexico City Grand Prix last year, where he had an absolute howler of a start, which, in another universe, could have actually turned out to be one of the greatest overtaking manoeuvres in modern Formula 1 history. Imagine that if that had been pulled off. Fifth to first, flummoxing Max Verstappen and leading your home Grand Prix. It would have been an absolute blast. Heck, even if he got to third, that would have still been a really audacious and impressive move. If only things had been different. Yes, I know, I am one of those lost loss beef really dunking on Checo in videos in the past, but I'm really trying to learn from that and try and look at different drivers from different fandoms in different perspectives. Really try and be fair in a way and be a little bit more balanced. Yes, last year for Checo was rough. But wouldn't you feel the same way if you had the Dutch line tearing you to pieces and an Austrian doctor further eviscerating you and turning you into a keyboard fodder? In the UK, and pretty much throughout a lot of Europe, Checo is probably not all that popular, and people will just label him as a pay driver and really a waste of space at Red Bull and let's be done with that. But if you just go over to the Western Hemisphere, he is a legend. At one point, even Max Verstappen said he was a legend. Let's not forget that. And I dare not speak that racer's name because otherwise it would turn me into keyboard fodder. It's actually become our version of the Scottish play. According to many search aggregators, Sergio Perez is a top ranking driver and North America absolutely goes wild for Checo. And he's a major contributor to Formula One's presence in the Western Hemisphere in the 2020s especially, since he joined Red Bull. And it's really brought into sharp relief because he and Logan Sargent are the only representatives from that side of the world on the F1 grid. And it's an absolute crime that we don't have anybody from South America to back it up. Since Massa retired, we've had absolutely none of them. But that doesn't mean we haven't come close though. Because in recent years, we've had Pietro Fittipaldi, Sete Camara, we had Felipe Dragovic, and Nella's brought a letter knocking on the door. Let the Brazilians in F1, but 
Okay, back to Perez. In all reality, Sergio Perez is the only effective bastion of the Western Hemisphere and North America going at the moment, and he has a huge and tremendous fan base. And I bet you, if Sergio Perez retires from Formula One, or he gets kicked out of Red Bull, we will see a huge drop in ticket sales for the Circuit of the Americas, Miami, Vegas, you name it, especially the Mexico City Grand Prix. If Checo's not there, not only would there be a huge drop in sales, I bet you wouldn't even have that race anymore. And then a couple of pieces from Planet F1 and BBC's Andrew Benson made me think about the other reasons as to why Checo might have been kept on for another contract extension when nobody in the English-speaking world would have thought that were possible. Basically, Red Bull's now done a Mercedes and playing it safe. The difference here though is that whilst Bottas has a fan base in F1, it's not nearly as vast as Checo's, nor as important for Red Bull Racing's bottom line and its reputation in certain territories. Think about it. Have you ever heard any personnel of Red Bull Racing, be it Christian Horner, Max Verstappen, truly lay into Checo, like really going to town on one, save for Max maybe getting a little bit frustrated every now and again? No, you haven't. Okay, you might be using the name Helmut Marco in my direction, and that is a valid point. But there is a very important thing I need to address here, is that, technically, Helmut Marco is not employed by Red Bull Racing. He is employed by the Red Bull Drinks Company, the overall company. He's there as a special advisor, a go-between, a representative of the Red Bull Junior team. May it rest in peace. It's only Dr. Marco and outsiders who really lay into him, and since Marco generates clicks, it drums up bad press. Yes, I know, guilty as charged. Red Bull signing Checo was a massive win for them in the wake of Papa Stroll ejecting the longtime stalwart of Team Silverstone, and that's only exploded upwards since F1's popularity had soared to heights never seen before after the Roni Rona. And as far as I can see it, Checo is the safe bet. He is the ideal teammate to Max Verstappen because he doesn't get on Max Verstappen's wick whatsoever. Max doesn't care who his teammate is so long as he doesn't get in their way. That's the most important thing. Checo has done his bit, and Max is like, yeah, whatever, okay, relative indifference. It's now going to be, if it goes all the way, the longest driver pairing in Red Bull Racing's history, longer than what Sebastian Vettel and Mark Webber had. And I think there are three key reasons why Aston Christian Horner chose to keep Sergio Perez and not get a little bit frisky. First, even though Sergio had tons of errors in 2023, he had the car in which to take over those faults and bring home the double for the team principal, something that he had never done before. It was a personal goal for Horner and Perez to get not only the driver's title, but also there's the constructor's title and 1-2 in the standings and it just meant they had the clean sweep, and therefore a personal achievement for Christian had now been completed after nearly 20 years of being a team principal. He could now theory retire, having done pretty much everything in Formula 1. That was the gift that Checo gave him, and Christian will never forget that. That is something very important. And yes, of course, you could easily point to Max's efforts in getting that by himself, and that's not me hating on Checo, that's just a numerical fact. Second, much like with Gerhard Berger when he was teammates with Ayrton Senna, Checo has realised that, in the end, he's not going to be a championship contender against Max Verstappen, a generational talent. As far as he's concerned, and he has said so publicly, that as long as he can be close enough to Max Verstappen, within maybe two, three, four tenths, that's fine. And come on, if you were two, three, four tenths behind Max Verstappen, then I would consider that an absolute win. I think Checo's just taking it on a race by race basis and really not trying to outstretch himself and really think about the entire season as a whole. Instead, just think, okay, that was a bad race, onto the next one. That's a much healthier mindset. And then, I think this is a really big one too, and Christian Horner has said this many times, he does not want two alpha drivers at Red Bull because put simply, it doesn't work. We got that with Weber and Vettel toward the end especially, and I don't think he wants a repeat of that. We even got a snifter of that with Ricardo and Verstappen. And also, he probably paid close attention to what was going on at Mercedes when they were really dominant. And Toto has openly said that had Nico Rosberg not retired, he would have had to really consider about firing one of those drivers. And since Nico Rosberg had signed a contract extension to 2018 before he decided to skip town, I think that Lewis Hamilton could have been told to bugger off. I wouldn't blame him because Toto had put up with three seasons of all of that stuff going between Rosberg and Hamilton, and I'm sure that Mercedes were pretty much sick and tired of it. Fortunately, Horner 
Milner is not in that situation anymore, and he's now got a situation where he's got a Hamilton Bottas dynamic. Perez is good enough in not rocking the Verstappen boat, which is incredibly shaky right now, and there's a lot of real friction between he and Jos, so the less friction, the better. If they signed Carlos Sainz, then can you imagine the chaos? Well, you don't need to imagine, I already made a video about it, which you can look at up top. And then there's a hidden fourth reason that I am really ashamed to talk about because, oh, well, it's just, it's just what Formula One is right now. They've got to have money. Max Verstappen may be mighty when racing, but he's now also mighty expensive. The highest paid driver on the grid, according to Forbes F1 Rich List, with a combined earnings package of roughly $70 million. Yes, I know you're about to say that, oh, it doesn't count with the cost cap. You're right, it doesn't. But it's still something that Red Bull has to pay for. And that means they have to find savings elsewhere. And that means you cannot hire a very, very fast driver who's also going to have a pretty steep pay packet. That cash has got to come from somewhere, and luckily enough for Sergio Perez throughout his entire Formula 1 career, he's had a healthy contingent of Mexican sponsors. And Perez's pay packet of $10 million, despite the fact he's been there for a long time, it may go up with this brand new contract, but either way, it's still relatively cheap. And those sponsors easily make up for the shortfall made by Max Verstappen costing so much. Not to mention that there are a lot of people out there who support Checo who are going to be buying lots of Red Bull merch. And Mercedes will be feeling that really hard when Lewis Hamilton leaves them. Also, Red Bull sells tons of cans of the stuff in Mexico to boot, and to dump Checo would easily see Monster Energy take that first place spot. Also, so Red Bull Racing has access to data that we mere mortals don't. Yes, we have an unprecedented amount of access to different types of data, onboard cameras and whatnot, but there is still plenty of telemetry to easily point out that when you look at the brass tacks, Checo is not as bad as he made out to be. And I bet another thing that Horner quite likes about Sergio is that he's uncomplicated. He's not rocking the boat at Red Bull. He's just happy to be there. So as long as Sergio just keeps himself to himself and races the car without causing any drama, he's absolutely golden. Because right now, Christian Horner is dealing with a lot of internal struggles. And I bet you that if Checo had been dropped, there would have been a huge fan backlash to add to Christian's woes. But then there could be another backlash from another chunk of their fans if they fail to secure the constructor's title, and it's down to Perez having a really bad amount of luck, and due to Ferrari and McLaren really surging forward. But like I said earlier, that's the boss's problem, not Perez's. As far as I'm concerned, he's secured the pound seat in the team. All he has to do is just now sit back, relax, and watch the drama unfold. Because he could easily see out Max Verstappen if the stars align. Should that Mercedes rumour come true, due to the rumours of their power unit being the best one out there, and the new rules for 2026 favouring powertrains more than in recent years again, and Albon's Williams extension being due to that fact, then Perez could have all the luck in the world, because if Max does leave before his contract expires in 2028, Christian Horner will be really caught between a rock and a hard place. And Checo's right there, and as Horner has said in his statement about Checo, he is seeking continuity and stability. So right at that point, it would be incredibly unstable. But then look, there's a checker right there, just sitting there and going, hola. Granted, it might mean that Daniel Ricciardo gets called up to partner Perez, but right now, Daniel Ricciardo's position within Formula One is a little bit shaky. And so far, I really don't think he's justified getting that spot. And him not getting that for 2025 and Checo getting that extension has pretty much put paid to any hopes that Daniel's going to be getting up to the top team, no matter how hard Christian is going to try and push that. But in any case, I congratulate you, Checo. You pulled a blinder of a deal. And whatever happens next, it's Christian Horner's fault. But what's happened to all of those drivers that were seeking to topple Checo and get that seat at the table next to Max Verstappen? What's going to happen to them? Because as far as I see it, the biggest losers from this are Carlos Sainz, Yuki Tsunoda, Daniel Ricciardo, and most notably, Liam Lawson. Sainz loses out as his big gamble has well and truly backfired as Mercedes has also made it clear that he is not of interest to them either. And as much as any fan would have loved to have seen a verstappen Sainz combo for a second time, we have got to really accept that that was not going to happen. No matter how hard we tried to manifest it into existence, it would have been fiery, it would have been tempestuous, it would have been exciting. But to anyone running an F1 team, it would have been giving them constant heart attacks. That team would have definitely been torn apart because Jos Verstappen and Carlos Sainz Sr. in the same room together again. Fist the cuffs all over the place! Add a driver who they know has already had problems with Max in the past, and then that will be a recipe for disaster. So Christian Horn is not going to be taking any risks here. And if he did do that and there had been problems, then Max would have easily exited the team into the bosom of Toto or even 
pop a stroll. I feel really bad for the two racing bull drivers right now because they've had their main prize, the thing that they've been striving for all year, now taken away from them. Now their main goal is to just try and survive. And whilst Daniel Ricciardo might have had a chance to get back to Rebel's top team should Max leave in 2026, Yuki Tsunoda can't do anything to impress the higher up seemingly. It's utterly baffling considering his uptick in form and how he steadily improved. Yes, of course, there's the Honda connection, which has provided support, and also a safety net because, let's be real here, if Yuki Tsunoda had not had that Honda backing and Honda providing so much success for Red Bull, then I think Yuki would have been dropped at the end of 2022. And now, thankfully, he's had that time to really prosper and blossom into a really competent driver who has now got a lot of teams really looking his direction, and he can now actually start to bargain with those teams. But I got a really bad feeling that Christian would just use the justification that, oh, we can't put Yuki in there because his temper in the past has shown to be quite contentious, and Max would probably not gel well with that or something like that. He would easily use his temper against him, even though Yuki has not really shown that in months. And that might lead to Yuki not being happy at Red Bull, his wings clipped, or if not, Yoss and Max once again walking. You're sitting a pattern here because Max could easily walk away from the team if the teammate they provide him is easily going to cause him problems and get in the way of him racing a car or not helping him enough. As for Ricardo, yes, I'm sure he's pretty bummed out that his dream for 2025 has failed to materialize, but he's probably aware that Horner has got his back and will keep him in F1 for as long as he wants to be there. He could have a new role alongside Tsunoda for 2025 in the short term because right now, Daniel Ricardo and Yuki Tsunoda are popular amongst Formula One fans. Yes, of course, Daniel's popularity is waning somewhat. People starting to get a bit weary of him not really producing results. And then, of course, there's, uh, there's my boy there really putting in the results. But he's still got that sustainable popularity amongst the blue chip companies to attract big sponsors. And that is an important trend that we will get to. Because right now, that team, Visa Cash App RB, is a corporate soulless entity. They need two drivers who are popular amongst fans to balance that out, meaning that they have a team which is, uh, fine. And also Christian Horner wants to make sure that second team is pulling its weight in terms of profit. Put simply, both drivers are useful where they are right now, and Checo is useful where he is, and has met Christian Horner's expectations. Then there's Liam Lawson. Yes, I'm sure you're getting sick and tired of hearing about him, but he has proved himself in F1. And thusly, he is worthy of the seat that was promised to him by Helmut Marko. But yeah, this is another problematic situation where Horner says one thing and Marko says another. Marko makes promises and Horner has an aneurysm. And if Horner had had his way, he would have sacked Helmut Marko years ago. But he can't do that since Max and Helmut are like that. You get rid of one, one will go. So with that promise being made public by Helmut Marko, Liam Lawson has been emboldened to expect a race seat with the Red Bull group for 2025. But now Checo's at the top team, and Sonoda and Ricardo are pretty much going to be kept where they are for next year, if Sonoda can't find somewhere else for next year, but I'm pretty sure he's looking right now, there is no clear sign that Liam's going to be getting a seat with the team that gave him his start in Formula 1. At this point, any junior academy of any F1 team is effectively pointless. So I wouldn't be surprised if Liam Lawson's teams are now starting to talk to other teams in Formula 1, and maybe trying to get a spot with them, because... Again, he has shown what he can do in a Formula 1 car, and it's pretty impressive stuff in a car that was easily one of the worst at the time before its big upgrade. By Checo pulling off this deal and capitalising on Horner's conservative stance lately, going against the rebellious streak of his own team, he can now choose his own destiny and be ready to lead the team should Verstappen leave. And if it turns out that Red Bull completely turns to dust in 2026, they get the rules wrong and they become a midfield team, then... That's not Checo's fault. He can now be part of a midfield team again and really show his mastery of being part of a team that really has to punch above its weight again. It's come full circle and Checo would be ready. Whatever happens, Sergio is the biggest winner here. Just like how the silly season is the ultimate loser here, unless Tsunoda and Lawson break rank. To find out why I think this silly season has turned out to be a complete and utter dud after the hype that we expected earlier in the year, go and watch this video next because... Oh my goodness, it's fallen apart so badly and we're only just in June! June!